This year for the first time, the World Finals ended with the inaugural IGSBA Endurance World Championship. The two-moto race featured some of the biggest names in the sport, including Russia's Yuri Ribico and Canada's Mike Klippenstein. Mike's very heavily dialed, Bill Chapin-tuned R&D Turbo Yamaha FX was considered to be the ski to beat. Motos began with classic Le Mans style beach starts. The race consisted of two half hour motos with a 25 minute break in between motos for refueling. Leading the pack out of turn one was Australian Mitchell Waite and Kuwait's Mohamed Berbea, both on Yamaha FZRs. Berbea powered his way to take the lap one green flag. Typical endurance racing mindset is for competitors to keep a little distance between themselves. It was obvious from the beginning that this race was going to be a bit different in that regard. Once the initial jockeying for position subsided, Mitchell Waite settled into second and American Jonathan Mangan, who made the last minute audible swap to his wife's Kawasaki Ultra in fifth. Mike Klippenstein has spent the better part of the race season this year racing in the highly regarded Aqua X Racing Series held on the East Coast, with racing conditions very similar to what was held here at Havasu. You know what, AquaX totally prepared me for this race because uh, the water gets so choppy, you rough, and you get into lappers, and, and the trick is really, you gotta ride wide lines and maintain that momentum. And you'll see a lot of times I swung really wide, it's just smoother water, and you can maintain your speed. Berbea is also a world champion close course racer, so close proximities and wakes were no big deal for him. On the other hand, it appeared that Yuri Ribico was a little uncomfortable with the situation. Yuri was able to keep his Turbo Yamaha in the top five for the first three quarters of the moto, yet struggled to keep from going down the lap to Berbea at the 23 minute mark. At about 25 minutes in, Yuri tangled with American Anthony Chul in the start finish line squeeze. The result ejected both from their skis. Yuri took the ragdoll style beating in stride, but once he was back at his ski, he realized that he had another problem. The thrashing tore his safety lanyard off his wrist. The IGSB course marshal was able to locate his lanyard and glove, but the delay took its toll. Yuri finished the moto in a disappointing 11th place. In the closing moments of Moto 1, Klippenstein was able to get around weight for second position but it was Mohamed Berbea that took the Moto One checkers. Berbea and Klippenstein were followed by Wait, Havasu local Bill Scott, and Russian Denis Bilikov. After what seemed like a very short 25 minute pit break, Berbea and Klippenstein lined up with 14 world class racers ready for the final Moto2 showdown. The clear Moto2 hole shot went to Mohamed Berbea, absolutely undisputed. Mitchell Waite was in second position, Mike Klippenstein in third. At only three minutes into the moto, Klippenstein was lining up Waite for a pass to second when Waite's safety lanyard failed. Waite would eventually get back underway to finish 12th. Klippenstein was more than happy to slide into second. At about the eight minute mark, Jonathan Mangan challenged Klippenstein for second, but was unable to seal the deal. Strange things can happen when you are the man that is favored to win entering a competition. Such was the case with Yuri Ribico. Yuri had decimated the field for 28 of 30 laps of the highly regarded Mark Hahn 300 in these very waters earlier this year. He and his 90 mile per hour Yamaha are very capable of winning and everyone out there knew that. Having that kind of a bullseye on your back can have the effect of minimizing the amount of friends you may have out there.
A brief stumble by Klippenstein allowed Ribico to unlap himself back past Clipper. If you were my Klippenstein, that's just not acceptable. Through it all, Berbea was able to ride fast, clean and drama free. Trouble for Klippenstein at the 20 minute mark when he struck the finish line buoy hard enough to eject himself from his ride. Fortunately for Mike, he had amassed enough of a lead over third place that he was able to take a refreshing swim and still retain second. Berbea, the class of the field on his Yamaha SVHO, with yet another uncontested start to finish win. Berbea and Klippenstein were followed by Nawaf Mohammed Al Faran, out of Kuwait, Belikov, and Mangan. Berbea's 1 1 finishes allow him to claim the title of 2015 IJSBA Endurance World Champion. I'm so happy, thanks God, first of all. Uh, that first time I race in endurance in my international uh, racing. So I am happy to get uh, first moto first and second moto the first. It's the first time in IGSB like endurance. So I'm very happy, thanks my Kuwait team to support me in our uh, IGSB award finals. And I want to thank my uh, sponsor, right, R&D, uh, Jet Rim, C2 Center, Pro Rider Garage for supporting me this uh, year.